If you're a prospective car owner, you may have seen videos that dismiss hydrogen technology as inefficient and expensive, or according to Elon Musk, mind-bogglingly stupid. Well, those are partially true for the consumers in the auto sector, but once you see the big picture of the hydrogen energy landscape, including its industrial usage, such as building heat and industrial heat, its application in oil refinery or passenger aerospace, you'd realize how important hydrogen energy is for the carbon-free future. Why should we care about hydrogen energy? What makes it different? And what are its applications in our future? Let's talk about it today. The natural starting point I thought would be to place hydrogen energy industry into the grand narrative of our world today, the biggest challenge for mankind in the 21st century, the environment. This explains why hydrogen energy is needed in the first place, and I'd also like to provide a reference point on where hydrogen energy is strategically among its competitors. The global warming narrative is one of the key narratives of the 21st century. The science behind it is solid, and despite the money interest behind the resistance, most governments in the world are now convinced of it. They have adopted a timeline for getting to net zero carbon emissions. Most developed countries are now committed to reaching carbon neutrality by 2050, and China has its own plan for carbon peak in 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. It is important to note that carbon neutrality is not net zero carbon. Neutrality means reducing carbon emissions and capturing carbon emissions to reach net zero carbon goals. This is essentially a countdown timer for the internal combustion engine cars and the fossil fuels industry. It is the grand narrative of environmental protection and its accompanying policies that enabled the clean and green industries. Two competing and complementing industries were birthed. The electric revolution that powers companies like Tesla and the hydrogen revolution, which is the main topic of today. This is when things get interesting. Since there are two solutions to reach carbon neutrality, competition is inevitable. We know that hydrogen energy is positioned as an alternative to electricity, but where do they compete? Where do they complement each other? Hydrogen energy has been widely used since the 1960s. For those of you who were born in the 60s and 70s, you may know about the Apollo missions of the United States. And if you are reading my newsletter, the chances are you know that hydrogen is the main source of energy for the Saturn V rocket that landed humans on the moon. The reason for usage is simple. Liquid hydrogen is a lighter material than its fossil fuel alternatives, which means spare capacity for astronauts. So when you were in awe about the majestic launch of the space shuttle, now you know that its propellant were liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So first of all, we need to understand that hydrogen energy is not primary energy that directly competes with solar and wind. It is a carrier energy. Hydrogen must be produced, stored and transported before it can be converted back into electricity for consumption. Therefore, hydrogen in this process is equivalent to batteries in the electric vehicles market or fossil fuels in the traditional energy market. It can either be used through internal combustion or a fuel cell. But since these are three different energy carriers, the technology stack required to support the hydrogen energy value chain is different comparing to the electric battery market and the fossil fuels market. This includes different technologies in the process of energy conversion from source energy to energy carrier and from energy carrier to end users. This means the competition between fossil fuels, hydrogen and batteries is a competition of supply chain. Whichever is cheaper and more efficient will Will win. Hydrogen is the most abundant chemical substance in the universe, constituting roughly 75% of all normal matter. Stars such as the Sun is mainly composed of hydrogen in the plasma state. As standard conditions, hydrogen is a gas of diatomic molecules having the formula of H2. Here's the problem. Since hydrogen exists in gas state and is the lightest element, we can't simply dig into the ground and find hydrogen reserves like how we find fossil fuels. Hydrogen needs to be extracted from water. And based on the level of greenness, the amount of carbon emitted through the hydrogen production process, hydrogen is further categorized into gray hydrogen, 
blue hydrogen, and green hydrogen. Gray hydrogen is the dirtiest hydrogen production method where methane and water are run through a steam reformer to produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This is currently the most popular method of hydrogen production with over 90% market share. Blue hydrogen, on the other hand, goes through the same process as gray hydrogen, but in the end, 80 to 90% of carbon dioxide is captured and stored. Green hydrogen is the most optimal way of hydrogen production because it produces no greenhouse gases. Water is run through an electrolyzer to extract H2 and oxygen. This process is 100% renewable, but it needs an extensive network of solar energy infrastructure. Less than 1% of hydrogen produced today is green. So here comes the two key challenges of the hydrogen industry. To build a technology stack and the infrastructure at a competitive pricing point, and to build applications of hydrogen to promote consumer needs. These are the mountains of the industry that are likely to take another three decades to climb. Hydrogen energy vertical is now comparable to the 70s semiconductor industry. The technology itself needs to reduce cost and commercialize, and the consumers must also be galvanized. Now, we need to broaden our views of hydrogen energy in this section. The discussion so far has been limited to consumer verticals of mobility sector, but hydrogen is about so much more. There are five broad categories of application for hydrogen energy, power generation, transport, industry energy, building heat and power, as well as industrial feedstock. These are very important use cases that are lesser known to consumers. For example, Energy in building and industry accounts for over 40% of total greenhouse gases emission. Hydrogen could help with those. It is also indicated in the analysis by Bain & Company that hydrogen energy will be competitive in all five areas by 2040. In the industrial feedstock sector, hydrogen could take 100% of the market share through the usage of ammonia and methanol. In the mobility sector specifically, by 2050, hydrogen cars may take 10% of the industry, and that's fair. What's more interesting in this graph is that hydrogen has better potential in some other transport categories like trucks, medium and large cars, passenger ships, as well as forklifts. These vehicles are for business usage, and their main consideration is cost, which hydrogen energy could be preferred as it is a lighter energy source that becomes more competitive when the vehicle gets heavier. When the range of vehicles goes above 400 kilometers, fuel cell EVs could be half as light as the normal EV. This is a physical limitation of battery electric vehicle. I can imagine a situation where for trucks and forklifts, hydrogen is a more cost-effective energy carrier than batteries in 2050, thus taking up more market share. Based on this logic, another clear application of hydrogen energy is in consumer aviation. Batteries are too heavy to fly, hydrogen holds the key to clean up the aviation industry. In summary, hydrogen can be a great contender in most to be verticals if investment into the area continues and the cost of producing, storing, and transporting hydrogen continues to reduce in the next 30 years. For the consumer vehicles vertical, however, there is a formidable infrastructure gap for hydrogen cars. Its battery electric competitor is gaining market share quickly and winning. So here you have it. Hydrogen as an energy carrier is no longer competitive in the consumer vehicles market. It's crashed by battery electric vehicles in the same category. However, hydrogen is well positioned as a replacement for fossil fuels in many other sectors, such as the long range, heavier vehicle category like trucks and forklifts as it is a denser energy carrier. Also, in the aviation market, hydrogen seems to be a scalable, clean contender as well. I remember advocating for a clean energy since the start of this channel in 2017, and it seems so distant. And at the time, people didn't think it would happen. And when I explained to people that the battery cost of Tesla would drop tenfolds and make it competitive to an ICE car in a few years, they look at me as if I am crazy. But look at where we are now in 2021 no one is questioning the green future i guess that's what it takes to be in the disruptive industries you need to wait for everyone else to catch up with you hydrogen in my opinion will not outcompete battery electric vehicles but it will be an important source of energy in a cleaner and greener future and that is my assessment i'll see you in the next one